Before we get started, a big thank you to all of my subscribers over on Patreon who are on screen now and my subscribers over on Twitch. Thank you all so much for the support and a big thank you to my legendary supporters on Patreon, Mike, Kira, Obi-Wan, Kanzi and Xiao Quinn. Thank you guys so, so much. If you would like to support me and the channel and work that I do, then please head over to patreon.com slash quest where you can pledge over there or go over to twitch.tv slash quest and you can always subscribe to my Twitch channel. But without further ado, let's get on with the show. Today we are doing scenario number 33, Thord Wood, which is a scenario that I forgot that I had because I accidentally didn't mark it off on my cheat sheet on my spreadsheet that I have uh, on the Google Drive. So I had the sticker on the board and I'd taken the piece off on the, uh, the physical game components, but on my digital um, log, I hadn't marked it off as an available scenario to me, which kind of explains why I was a little bit confused as to where I'm supposed to go next in the main story. But now we're back on track. So this is gonna be part of the main story. This is part of the lurker chain. So this is like way out of order because I did the, the run-ups to this scenario probably within the first, I wanna say 20 episodes or so. I don't know for sure, but probably around that kind of level of uh, of time ago so we have yeah we are doing some serious looping back here but thordwood is the the next scenario so we need to do a summer road event as we oh summer road event one Hey, Vessi, how's it going, bud? Okay, here we go. You're hiking along the banks of a small creek when a spray of color draws your eye. Blood in the snow. You draw closer to the scene. Telltale black-red pools already soaking into the snow and mud. You're no stranger to the aftermath of a hunt, and this doesn't look like someone took down game. From the amount of blood and disturbed snow here, you're pretty certain this was a fight. The blood trails off from the scene into a nearby copse of trees. Following it, you discover that the trail splits at a fork in the path. The blood trail continues to the left, Though judging by the broken twigs and footprints, something also ran off to the right. Option A. Follow the bloody trail to the left. Option B. Follow the trail of broken twigs to the right. Okay then, poll is up. Are we going to the left or are we going to the right? Option A. Go to the left. Option B, go to the right. So it's either follow the bloody trail, which is the left, or trail of broken twigs, which is the right. Hmm. Broken twigs and footprints. So my guess would be... Some kind of attack. Someone's been robbed or something. It does say footprints. So presumably it was a, a human who made these prints. Option B. Oh, you guys want to follow the broken twigs. Interesting. Following the broken twigs. Following the bloodless tracks, a rotten stench fills your nostrils. Only when you reach the end of the path do you realize that the creatures who made this trail left no blood. Not because they were uninjured, but because they have no blood. <laughs> the pack of frozen corpses turns from its aimless wandering to attack you. You beat them back and retreat, but you lose some blood of your own in the process. 
Oh no. All right, all characters start the next scenario with wound. Not the best. Um, the other option was that we would have to return one collective item to the available supply. That doesn't sound like a particularly nice one, but it does have the caveat of adding event um, Winter Road 36. So that's kind of interesting. So we, we kind of miss out on a on an event by going B there. But I feel like we get the we get the lesser punishment, but we don't get the the extra event, which may also be a terrible event. So perhaps perhaps that's a good thing. <laughs> perhaps that is a good thing after all. Okay. Scenario 33, Thawed Wood. Let's hear the introduction. The Radiant Forest. Proof that map makers have a dark sense of humor. The forest, you find, is quite the opposite of Radiant. Instead, it is an overgrown tangle of ancient trees and dense knotted ivy. Each step you take is hard earned requiring you to climb over slanted logs and high arching roots. What's more, there is a particular weirdness suffusing this place. The creatures and insects chirp in foreign ways, and even the ground feels somehow deranged, tilting at times, almost as if it's bothered by your presence. And yet the strangest thing about this place is the air. It's warm. Not long after you enter, the snow gives way to lush green underbrush, and you find yourself removing your furs to avoid overheating. It's an oasis, a balmy island in an otherwise frozen wasteland. And so it should come as no surprise that the Radiant Forest is home to many creatures. A dark blur whips toward you, razor-sharp talons raking through the air. You dodge, more speeding shapes diving at you as you draw your weapons. You dive, and the attack pauses long enough for the aggressor to reveal itself. A lanky, humanoid creature emerges from behind a tree. Its sinewy legs and arms are wrapped in dark grey skin, and its upper body is covered in dozens of flapping black wings. Loud walkers walking in my a meal for Sharon is new skin to wear. Then the many birds perched on the creature's waxy torso spread their wings and come at you. Yeah. Shrike fiends. Why did it have to be Shrike fiends? My least favorite enemy, I think. I'm pretty sure it's my most hated uh, new, new enemy at least. Um, yeah. It's been a while though, so it has been a while. Perhaps we can forgive them. Forgive them. <laughs> Open a new page. Um, okay. So. So far, nothing much here. Just says that the scenario is complete when three radiant stones have been found. At the end of that round, read 112.4. When door one is opened, read 20.1. So there's literally nothing else we really need to know right now about this scenario. Um, that is it. How are Frostaven Road events? Clearing Road events were both highly negative and fairly redundant results. So not that bad to progress. Does Frosthaven feel more varied? Um, well, you have the two different decks, right? You have winter and summer. Winter being generally harsher. Not always the case. Um, I would say that I feel like I have generally not had really punishing road events. I've had a couple that have been like a little bit nasty, but like starting a scenario with wound, it's, it's almost like a, a scenario effect, right? It's not that much of a big deal. Um, it's e easily overcome by the fist, very, very easily overcome. So 
doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I think that the story elements of them are better. Like the way they've been written, I would say are all better than Gloomhaven. Just feel a little bit more interesting. Um, and to be fair, not I haven't really come across many or probably any really that I can think of that have been like what I would call padding, you know, um, where they just kind of like, ah, you find a thing and there's a thing like whatever. Like they all feel kind of pretty well written and purposeful and different. Um, I mean, I've done so many Gloomhaven events because <laughs> of playing it for so long that they all kind of blend together. But yeah, I would say that there's definitely... They're definitely overall better. For sure. You find that there's a much bigger difference in the outcomes of the Outpost event decks, Winter versus Summer, than the Road decks. Yes, I think that's fair. I think you're much... In the Winter decks, you're much more likely to get attacked, right? Uh, in your Outpost than in the Summer. You still get attacked from summer because it happened to me last time. But for the most part, that's true. And then the road decks are just themed a little bit more differently, I guess you would say. So, you know, during the summer, there's, you know, more stuff like walking through the woods and doing that kind of stuff. And I guess the kind of similar tone of what maybe original Gloomhaven was. And then winter ones are obviously a lot more like they play, they play into the theme of the season, right? Um, but yeah, out, I would say outposts. Outposts could be pretty sweet. Like I said in the last episode, that I wasn't a huge fan of outpost events that are just like attacks all the time. Because especially if you get unlucky and you have to deal with a bunch of attacks, because you come back to Frosthaven, maybe you've done a hard fought scenario maybe you didn't get loads of loot but you um you won the scenario it was a tough scenario you didn't get the opportunity to get loads of loot but you pulled out a good win and you come back without many resources but with you know your head held high with a triumphant win and then the road event hits you and you have to deal with an attack and you end up losing a bunch of resources because or buildings get wrecked because of just a couple of card flips which just feels uh, not great. You know. I feel like it's... I feel like the the attacks kind of almost trivialize the economy. Like, it's just... It just doesn't feel fair. But, I mean, I guess they're not meant to feel fair. They're meant to feel like, hey, you're in the harsh realities of... Frosthaven, you know, it's it's gonna be tough. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, Phantom, how's it going, buddy? Right. Uh, battle goals for our um, uh, fist. Gambler, aesthetic, acrobat. Um, kill an enemy that, ha that with an attack that has disadvantage is pretty tough. Although they are ranged. We do have one ranged attack. Collect fewer loot tokens than any other character. Pretty doable, but this character does loot for us. Lose a card to negate suffering five or more damage. That's something we cannot really do on this character. So I think we're probably... We're probably looking at Gambler, because I don't want to... I don't want to hinder myself with loot. I think we're probably looking at Gambler. I just think like it's a... We, we do have Ice um, Shard Launch, which we've just upgraded. So we, there's an opportunity here that if an enemy's on like one health, we can just try it and hope we just don't draw the minuses or whatever. All right. Drill. Slayer, Sleeper, Tormentor. Um, Slayer. Kill two or more enemies in the same round. Doable, very doable actually, considering that we have um, B Max and a couple of cards that multi target. It's actually a pretty doable two tick. If we try and angle ourselves a good B Max on something like 
two black imps, right? I mean, they only got four health. I mean, if we could on the first turn, we could do it on turn one if we had enough movement. Um, seems pretty doable to me. Have one or more cards in your hand each time you rest. That I don't like. Apply a different negative condition to an enemy that already has... Yeah, I mean, I think we just go Slayer. What did I gain on the coin event last scenario? Unfortunately, just coins. So it was a... It was not one of the precious coins that uh, she's looking for. So it was just like a... Oh, it's not one of the coins that she's looking for. But it was... Um, I think it was more valuable than like a normal coin. So it gave, it gave me like 10 gold or something. How far am I in the puzzle book? Hey, I want to say like page seven. Uh, I've done everything that I can. So I'm not waiting on anything. I'm waiting for my next instruction to go to the next page. So I am... Um, just waiting on that, I think. Challenges. Beguiling forced. Foul luck. Whenever you reveal a minus two attack modifier card from the modifier attack modifier deck. From the monster, treat it as a times two instead. Hmm. An extra crit. All enemies, all enemy ranged attacks have push one. I mean, there's a lot of ranged enemies in this scenario, so that would be really annoying. Could I play with like a minus two? A crit? I mean, it... It's basically the same as, it's almost the same as like just having like a scenario effect that's like shuffle two blesses into the enemy deck at the beginning of the scenario, right? Like if, if, one, if one of these said like shuffle two blesses in, I'd probably be like, sure, do it. So I think I can do that. I think that's fine. I think we're doing, I think we're doing foul luck. Just minus two is now a crit. Um, I think these guys don't really hit very hard either. I think for the most part, they hit quite low attack values, right? I mean, yeah, you got attack value. Well, attack value four, I guess, on the Strike Fiend's pretty, pretty miserable. You do also lose the minus two. That's true. The minus two draw is quite a nice draw. That is true. It, it's basically, instead of probably being dealt little to no damage, I'm now being dealt a considerable amount of damage, that is true. It's almost, it's almost turning a miss into a crit. Almost. But I think we can deal with that. You know, for one, I think it's a, an easier challenge to do, right? And it's a really easy one to remember, which turns out is really good for me, because I always forget. <laughs> I always forget what it does. So this will be really easy just when it flips. Okay. Mental note. Um, okay. So on the first turn, I think we just want to probably get rid of this. Probably just get rid of this poison, eh? Poison wound. I mean, we're going to play one with the mountain. For sure. We could also just pull, we could pull the regular Strike Fiend in, nice and early. Get that, get the regular Strike Fiend pulled in. We've got the Retaliate 2 on it. Obviously we don't have the Earth, but we don't get the Immobilize, but that seems like a pretty good turn. Because then also I can just pull him in and I can just let Drill go ham with a giant sword or something. Uh, you should be in uh, regular right now. And 
That seems like a really good idea. Loser! Hello once again. How are you doing, Raiders? Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to have you guys back. Hope you had an awesome stream, loser. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we are back playing Frosthaven, like we were last time. We're now one scenario uh, on. And we are uh, we won the last scenario, for those of you who may have dipped out afterwards. But we, we won the last scenario, so we're on to a brand new one. We're literally just starting. You join us on the very first turn of the game. So we've decided what cards we're going to play with our fist character. And I think... I would like to try and get a bit more power. These guys don't have shield, right? Don't retaliate or something? No. No, they just got a bunch of immunities, which are a little annoying. I think we can just potentially, we can just do a nice... Um, A nice attack on this guy. So 10 health. We have to do a pretty considerable attack. I think if we go for Ancient Drill Top, maybe. Save in the B-Max. Or to be honest, I could just go for a stun, you know. Because a kill is unlikely here. Could just go for a, the, the stun with Electrical Discharge. And if I use the bottom of bronze plating to give myself uh, the up, up attack, then I can attack for two, three, four with the giant sword, five, six. That's pretty good first turn, I think. So we're going to go for 10 here. Um, and we'll go for 18 here. And hope that that allows us to go before the Shrike Fiends. Nope. Nope, it does not. <laughs> okay. Well, this is why I love Shrike Fiends. Um, so all enemies within range 3. Uh, luckily, nobody is in within range 3. But then it's going to do a retaliate to range 3. So unfortunately, that does sort of mean that we're going to get retaliated against. Um, a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. Right, we'll play 1 with the mountain. Get our 2 XP and get our regenerate. Get that starting to go. And then we will use Drawer of the Bedrock. And we will pull this fella in. Yeah. Uh, we do technically have Retaliate 2 for the round. Not that it's probably going to play too much into what we're doing. Okay. On to DeWalt, our drill. So we will play out our bronze plating to give ourselves plus one attack to all of our melee attacks this round. That also increases our pressure by one because of the little red up arrow. So we go up to our orange high pressure. And then we will play electrical discharge, which is going to be an attack two. But because we're in orange, it's actually going to be an attack three. Uh, and we have bronze plating, so an attack four. I think also I will just use my giant sword here. Five, six, uh, to give myself plus two to the attack and Spyglass to give myself advantage because I mean, when you're doing a big attack, you want to do it with advantage, right? And now if I guess if I draw that times two, at least then I avoid the retaliate damage as well. So let's give it a go. Yeah, plus one. So looking at two, three, four, five, six, plus one, seven. So seven damage to... The strike fiend seven and i take two retaliate damage back unfortunately for me then i have to decrease my pressure by two but we will get ourselves down to low pressure um i guess i could in theory here i could use the major frenzy potion just to try and finish them off they're on three health right kind of makes sense to just use my items when i can and also, because of this, it's actually going to be an attack four, um, five. No advantage, but an attack five. He is stunned, though, right? That was a, that was a stun. So 
So, hmm, perhaps, perhaps I shouldn't use my major friends. I mean, a stun is is great here, right? There's pretty much no point finishing them off with the major frenzy potion because they'll be dead to like one hit, pretty much. And we can even ignore them for a full round if we want. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. We won't bother doing that. Ooh, so we've got some strengthening going on here. So this is going to be strengthened up by these imps. And they are going to strengthen each other up as well. One thing I did notice is that there is a black imp um, critter that we can capture. A very good one too, actually says in initiative order all characters immediately perform attack two which is pretty nuts to me i mean that's really good um so i definitely want to try and use my trainer's net and capture one of these imps um okay next round how do we want to go about it? Now we've got no no elements really to use, which is a little bit of a problem. I could try and go for the gambler on the three health strike fiend, couldn't I? It's a bit risky though, because I can only attack for two. But ultimately, I oh, I should probably um, take some damage to get this card back. Actually, sorry, let's take three damage to take that card back. Um, I could just heal, couldn't I? And then just tr and just kill it, basically. Kind of go late, a late heal, kill that thing. Turn. I need to create ice. That is quite clear here. Ice is very important for future turns. The best way for me to create ice right now is going to be to play shard launch, which I guess is an okay ability, but that means I won't be playing my heal, which is a bit awkward. I definitely want to go late here with the drill. Joe's going to struggle because the movement's going to be a problem now. It is nice being in low, though, because I can do a pretty nice heal on myself. Actually, maybe I let... Okay, maybe I let Drill deal with that. Because Drill's actually very well placed to do that. We go late. We do a big heal. Oh, we go early, make ice, do a big heal. That's kind of clutch too. Huh. And then we have ice to use with our fist, which definitely unlocks the character a lot more. <clears throat> is it plus one to the range on shard launch? It is, yeah. Makes it a little bit easier to hit the, the target too. To be honest, Fist doesn't really have very good enhancement targets, which makes sense because the whole mechanic of the character is getting your cards back. 
So if you had like just a broken enhancement opportunity or a very powerful one, you would just constantly get that one card back, right? It would it would lead to uh, a pretty weird loop. I think I might use Shard Launch as a bit of a late... Oh, I could use that as a move four, couldn't I? Yeah, I could. Okay, let's do that. I'm kind of hedging a little bit here. I'm hedging that things go a bit weird. Might be kind of strange, but we'll see. Yeah, I think that was that was a good hedge. Oh, well, actually, no, it wasn't because the Shrek fiends are going on 90. <laughs> okay, so we'll go a big, we'll do a big heal. So we'll do three, but because we're in low, that's actually going to be a five and one XP. One XP. We didn't get any XP from the last. No, we didn't get any XP. That is going to increase the pressure. If I can press it, there we go. And then I'm going to use steam armor just to give myself a shield one, but more importantly, just to create ice. We're kind of just chill. So we do have shield one right now. I don't think it's going to play into it at all. Okay, black imps. Yeah, just going to move on. No healing required. Quite nice that nothing came from the strength from there. Now, do I want to take a strengthened attack four? Probably not when there's multiple crits in the deck now. I think what we probably have to do is we probably just have to kill the one with stun here. So if I use Fury of the Mountain Top here to attack for four, I'll get myself an XP. Um, we actually should gain two life here because the regenerate triggers before the the, yeah, the wound. But we choose that that ordering of effects. Okay, minus one. So that's going to be three damage, which is enough. Down it goes. And then I guess I'll just move on to the loot, huh? I mean, seems rude not to. To hide. Uh, that's been consumed. Next round. So uh, we will pay... Should we Fury the Mountain or Cold Boulder back? I feel like Cold Boulder is going to be better because move four. We'll pay two life here. Is that Cold Boulder? Okay. That's going to go there. Right. So I am in high. I really need to try and get up into like... Big, big. So I need to play. I need to play super heat transfer here. Really, that's what I need to play. Uh, that's tricky though. I guess I can use the snow imp to get us to kind of move a little bit closer. That might be a good idea here, right? Snow imp to just kind of get some free move. That then gives me a bit of a play. Because at the moment, I'm just a little bit too far away. 
Also, I would love to do Shard Launch on the two imps because realistically, if I can get one of them down to one or two health, so if I just draw like a plus zero or a plus one, they're within capture range for the trainer's net, which I think is ideal. The only problem with that is it sort of stops the easy slayer completion, but I think I would rather use the trainer's net to get one of them if possible. The other thing would be to use Draw the Bedrock to then pull the Elite in again, which is kind of spicy, you know? I, I kind of like that idea. Pull the Elite in again. We don't get to um, do much more, but pulling him in... Yeah, then I can do the big B-Max over there. And I'll probably get an opportunity to capture another Rimp. You'd think so, right? Okay. I think this could be a plan. So if we pull him in, what are we doing? Could use cold boulder to make me some earth. Is that actually any good? Or do I just use in case punch to make some ice and then just have a big... Yeah, probably. Okay. Let's pull that elite in. Gives me the opportunity then to just kind of go, go ham a little bit. The only problem is that I can only pull him to like, I can't pull him adjacent. That would have been so good. We have to use super heat transfer. That is definitely something that I must use here. Must use it. Well, I suppose I don't have to. I suppose I could use just a top attack and just a bottom increase. I only really need to go up by one. Yeah, I don't have that though. Yeah, okay. Because then we'll be rock- Yeah, and then it gives us the rocket boots all the way over to the imps. Yeah, it's probably better actually. I think I might end up just using this as like a... Nah, I don't use this as a heal. Check the setup. You think the two traps and the door are one hex to the left? Ah, you're right. It's weird because the join isn't there. Good call. Good catch. Uh, so... That's going to make this awkward. Um... They're probably just here, because they would have been blocked here. Yeah, I think they would be just there. Thanks, Zephon. Appreciate that. I think it's just I just assumed that it would be on the join. I will make it harder to get the two targets on them, won't it, huh? Considerably harder. Ah, well. Oh, that retaliate again. Luckily, we don't take any damage, but we're going to take some retaliate damage here. We'll do the we'll do the pull in again. I 
Uh, we'll just do in case punch here, and we'll just attack for three, four, four. make ice, take two retaliate damage. Now, whenever you suffer damage this round, one adjacent enemy suffers one damage. I don't know if we will end up taking damage. Probably not. Doesn't look like it. And then can't move. Well, I guess I can get to this spot next round. It's kind of okay. No, oh, my base. Then unfortunately for me, I will have to attack just to try and get the uh, the double power up. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So we will attack for one. Yikes. Not a good trade. Whoa. Actually, that doesn't really help us in this situation. <laughs> One damage. It allows us to go to, to over anyway. End of round, we will pay... Two health to get in case punch back. Bedrock anymore. Bit low on health at the moment, aren't we, huh? I think we know exactly what we're doing here with the drill, though. Big B Max turn incoming. 22. Mark my words, this will be the turn of the M60 Death Shield 5. It's written. Especially now that I've said it, it will definitely happen. Do I brittle him to try to attack for a decent amount next time? Yeah, I think probably so. Okay, lucky, lucky. All right, so we'll use voice from below just to, uh, well, we'll get it. We'll get one heal from this. Oop. And we'll get two heals from voice from below. Boop. Make that earth. Uh, and then we'll play frozen over. So we'll consume the ice. See, gains us a ward. I'll put one there. I'll put one there. And we'll make this guy brittle. The ward might come in quite clutch, actually, in this round. All right, DeWalt. Here we go, buddy. Rocket boots. So we're going to move for six. And one XP. And we're going to lose some health. So we're going to lose the health. We gain an XP. Uh, we're going to move for six, though. Whoop. That's going to cool us off down to high. And then we're going to B max, baby. So we're going to attack for four. Target two. One XP. Lose one health. 
And yeah, we're going to attack uh, the imps. So no whammies, please. So first imp, plus one, dead. Second imp, zero, dead. Easy. Easiest slayer you'll ever see. That is Slayer completed. Two ticks, baby. In the bank. Nice. I think that might even be the first time I've actually got a really satisfying B-Max. I've had a couple where I could just attack, but never been that, you know, that good. Only in the bank if you win the scenario. That is very true, but we're off to a, I would say we're off to a pretty good start considering the enemies that are here. Like this, that room doesn't look too bad, but I think this style of enemy is really annoying. Shrike fiends are just annoying. Imps are annoying. So I'm sure it's going to get a lot harder. It is a three complexity scenario. Which has got me intrigued because it's only two rooms. So the next room is the final room. So obviously the scenario goal was kind of a little bit, uh, you know, didn't really give us the full picture. Just kind of gave us some information, but didn't give us a full picture. We're obviously going to be running around capturing these radiant stones. But how hard that will be, I do not know. Right. Shrifeen is going to attack the... Um, this with disadvantage, not going to move at all. So disadvantaged attack. Oh, that's a pretty good disadvantaged attack. So it's going to be plus one. Um, we do have some armor here. Sorry, that's the armor I want to use. Um, so that's going to be five damage. Rounded down. Half rounded up, right? So, it's, well, yeah. So it's going to be two damage. I believe. Um. Yeah. End of round. Take two damage to retrieve voice from below. How do I only have one card? Oh, I suppose I haven't. Should I have used a stamina potion then? Yeah, maybe I should use a stamina potion on just to get that extra turn. Really? Don't have much to do, do I? I mean, I could long rest. I mean, it's not a bad time to long rest. I've used two kind of key items already. Basically, I'm waiting for the fist to catch up. I could probably waste a turn looting next time. All right, maybe I'll just long rest. first. First things first, encased punch. So we're going to attack for three, but it's actually four because they are occupying icy terrain. So attack four. Uh, then with the times two, it's actually going to be eight. Um, then what we'll do is we'll do, uh, bottom of shard launch here. Just go here. 
Mobilize them, do a point of damage. I feel a little bit nervous about my health at this stage. I've, oh, I didn't heal one, right, from the thing. A little bit nervy about my health right now. He's going to push me away, which actually is maybe helpful. Because then we just shard launch them and kind of ignore them next round, maybe. So in attack of four, I'm on seven. I suppose I, if, if they do draw something really terrible, I do have thick skin, so... You know, sometimes cards are just in your favor, chat. Sometimes cards are just in your favor. Better to be lucky than good, as I always say. <laughs> right, DeWalt. What do you need? Well, we need all of these cards. We know that to be true. Um, oh, was I supposed to go down from the B-Max? I was, wasn't I? Just trying to figure out like what, do I want to go up? Do I want to go down? I can do that in my long rest. I think I probably want to go up, and I think I probably want to just get rid of... Man, so many good options. Maybe Steam Armor? Yeah. I like Steam Armor, though. And I think I'm going to go up. It's going to allow me to get to over very quickly before I open the door. Which is kind of key, I think. Now I can use super heat to transfer bottom to just go up. Jump on a piece of loot. It's quite good. Then I've got a great kind of like way into the next room. Gotta throw away a card though. If I do that, I gotta throw away a card. Um... 
Possibly power core. We don't need to worry about healing, maybe. I just need a card like a top that I'm not going to care about. Ah, oh, bronze plate in. Let's just use bronze plate. We'll do that 25. Going to make ice as well, which is kind of nice. But I think we're going to make ice anyway. Um, oh, I need to take two damage, didn't I, to get a card back there. I need to get shard launched back from that previous played round. Because realistically, I'm going to play that and then just hopefully we are kind of there. Ugh, 52 is horrible. Can't go 52 initiative. I'm really hoping that I don't draw a minus one here. I'm kind of banking on it. If I don't, then it's kind of rough for me, actually. I guess if I play voice from below, then if I don't draw the hit, then I could always just audible into healing myself for two. As long as I don't get screwed here, anyway. Attack 2, target 3, range 6, pull 2. Yeah, that classic. Okay. Well, let's shard launch first, then. Okay. No worries. No dramas. No dramas. Uh, then we'll just use this as, I think, a move too, rather than the heal. Let's get ourselves to here. Coins. The lovely coins. Oh, I should have healed one at the beginning of my turn too. I remember that regenerate trigger. Okay. Um, for the vault, we're gonna go, we're gonna play the bomb of super heat transfer. So because we are in high, it's gonna be minus one move. So it's gonna be a move one, create ice, but move pressure up. So we're gonna move here. Get the loot token. Move pressure up. And then I'm just throwing away bronze plating. I don't need to do anything with it. Uh, don't get any XP for that, no. Um, but we draw a coin. Very eventful, very exciting. Okay, do I want to use... I mean, I like, could I use a major stamina potion here to get in there? I'm thinking, like, I've got two cards left in my hand. Realistically, I get one more card back. I've got, like... Two more rounds with the cycling, maybe three more rounds if we go with the stamina potion. I have to wonder that the next room is going to be not very nice. I'm going to assume that it is a pretty nasty room. Um, and it'll be a room where we can't probably take long rests. So if I have an opportunity to take a long rest now, probably beneficial. That's the way that I'm reading this scenario. Might be wrong, but generally speaking, it's a two-room one. I'm probably going to open that door and it's going to be like, hey, we're going to spawn enemies every single round. Have at it. So three complexity. I think that's a, probably a pretty fair assumption to make. The problem is, is that I'm really ready to go on my drill right now. Like delaying a round is just wasteful at this point. I could short rest on Fist. There's nothing... Like, I mean, realistically, I haven't used many of my resources here. I've got ice up. The only problem is, is I'm going to have to walk through that trap right now. Unless I use the Major Stamina Potion during the turn this round to basically get something with jump back, which I could do. I've got some cards with jump. Could get in case punch back. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, so if I take two damage here, I get back... I, mean, I can get back Shard Launch, which also has a jump on it. Also use the Major Stamina Potion to get back... Probably Frozen Over, so we can get some Brittle going if needed. I think there's also a fair chance here that I should use the Corrupted Scroll to heal myself for five. And poison, of course, but that will block the initial one point of heal. I think that that's pretty, pretty good. Strikes too easy, huh? Yeah, about that. Okay. Let's see. But we're, the thing is, is I'm just, I'm so ready to rock right now that I just don't want to, I don't want to waste the opportunity, you know? Bust open the room with the old rocket boots electrical discharge combo. Seems reasonable to me. And then hammer maybe to follow afterwards. Or we basically could actually go earlier. And then we could have a frozen over combo. But Frozen Over does not work. If there's no enemies around. So what happens if I go in there and the enemies are like right at the back of the room? Like there's no one anywhere near me. That is a bit of a problem. But I feel like I'm going to have that problem regardless. Uh, maybe we open the door with Fist done. No, because then Devolt can go... No, no, no. I think this way I, I let the play progress slightly. Okay. Right, so we're going to play this first. It's going to be a move 6. 1 XP. Take a point of damage. Move us down. Six, so one, two. So we've got four left. Let us open the door. Using the unnaturally warm air as a guide, you venture deep into the radiant forest, turning in whichever direction the heat is strongest, and you eventually arrive at a stone cave whose mouth radiates waves of dry heat. Inside, the temperature is nearly unbearable. Each breath is like inhaling fresh steam. You cover your mouth and move quickly. The rock itself is like a scorched kiln. The ground is cracked, broken into irregular scales like a dried up mud flat in need of a flood. And walking on it makes you worry that your boots might melt. Acting on a hunch, you pry up one of the scales and are rewarded with a burst of fire from below. That confirms it. The heat source is somewhere beneath the ground. You stumble back, blinking away the pain as a seething body claws itself out of the ground. A flame demon. You draw your weapon as you realize the true danger of your task. You need to find the heat sources and extract enough of them for the Tinkerer to make your diving vessel. But there's no knowing how many demons lie in wait. Mm. 
Time for math? Oh no, not what I like to hear. Uh, right, let's figure out... I mean, to be honest, I can probably vacate this tile, right? I think I probably can. Um, so we know that we're two spaces away, because this will be a bit easier. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of tough to put this all on screen, I think. Yeah, we're going to have to move some other things around. There's the doorway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like the steam should affect my character. Wow, well, there's some special rules coming up, and there's a lot of them. It's a big old special rules. No enemies initially on the map, though, which is interesting. I've got to put a lot of tokens out, though. A lot of A's. I don't even know if there is enough A's. And one B. I don't think they gave, gave me enough A's. Oh, there's another A. No, it's not enough A tokens. Oh, I don't know if that's an A, maybe. It's close to enough A tokens. Unless I've somehow lost them. Another A, another A, 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 A. Hey, sixth district. Welcome Raiders, hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great stream. Welcome in, we are just unveiling a new room in Frosthaven. How's it going? Got a guy, some jobs as well. Hey, no worries dude, of course. I totally understand. Thanks for the raid, I really appreciate it man. Hope your, uh, your jobs go well. Played Yu-Gi-Oh today? Nice. Never played Yu-Gi-Oh myself. I watched the TV series. Uh, I was a bit obsessed with the TV series for a period of time. It used to always be on... Um, when I came back from school. It always used to be on the TV like... Like 4, 4.30, something like that. So I watched the original series of Yu-Gi-Oh. And I haven't really watched much since then. And yeah, I never got into the cards because it was more of a, like, we were more of a Pokemon kind of school. It was, all, it was all Pokemon cards back then, but I was generally quite into Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, pretty much anything, to be honest, of that type for a while. Right, we're going to have to use some other tokens that just have to represent A as well, unfortunately. Well, not that because it says B. Anything that's not B. Anything that's not A. Anything that's not B is an A. I hope that makes sense. Hmm. Is it working, Phantom? 
should hopefully work. Oh, wow, maybe I should just use those. Oh, maybe I should just use those tokens. That's really, that's that much better way of doing it. I should just do it like this. There you go. That's better. Smart. Now it's all consistent. <clears throat> Plays Digimon, Scrap Mechanic, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Or three of his five... Three of his five student days. Interesting. Scrap Mechanic. I can't say I've ever really heard of that one. There should be 12 and they should be numbered 1 to 12. It says to put them up A here. Not what it says here. It says to randomly place one. Oh, randomly place one numbered token. Why didn't they just. Oh my word. Okay. So have I, have I done that? Somehow magic magicked into that? I think I'm missing the 10. Oh, it just says any random token. Place one num Okay, so I've done it. I've done it. I've just miraculously lucked into the right way of doing it. <laughs> Six is also British. Another Brit brother. Nice. <clears throat> How far am I into the game? Um, I am... I would say I'm probably around about 70% of the way into the game, Master. About 70%, um, roughly. It's hard to judge because it really depends on how much, like, it's, it's like how much side content do you want to do, right? I would say I'm probably around about 70% of the way through the main story. If I wanted to say, like, to fully completion, I'm probably under, under 50% in terms of, like, to completion. Are there too many new mechanics? Yeah, there's quite a lot of new mechanics. Like, there's a pet system that you get later on in the game. So we have, you can capture pets, kind of like a Digimon Pokemon vibe, where you can kind of capture pets. And they give you like bonuses, one-time uses and things. Obviously all of the characters are different and the mechanics of those are different. There's challenges that you can do, which basically just add extra difficulty, um, but you get rewards for completing them. An, an overall extra, like an extra rule that just modifies the difficulty of the dungeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit, I don't know why it says all of the A's here and then it's like, oh, just do this. I think they could have, instead of putting A, they could have just put something else there, but okay. Anyway. That's my fault for not reading. I should have just read the special rules first before I started to, to lay everything out. But anyway, we got that. So special rules. Randomly place one numbered token face down in each A. These represent dousing runes. If any character enters a hex with a dousing rune, reveal it. Spawn one flame demon at any adjacent empty hex if it is odd, or one earth demon if it is even. They are, they are normal for two characters. Earth demons are elite for three, or both are elite for four. A dousing rune points to its own hex and all hexes on tile 16b exactly range x from it, where x is half the value on the numbered token rounded up. Any character occupying a hex that three or more dousing runes point to may forego a top action, discarding the card instead, to gain one radiant stone. Oh, this is like Tobago. Dude, we're just playing Tobago. We're just playing Tobago. Tobago is a fantastic treasure hunting game. It uses a very similar mechanic to this, where you basically have to keep adding clues to basically narrow down the search area, which gives it really good randomization because it's just 
flipping clues randomly and it'll be like, can't be in water, can't be in sand. Okay, well then it's going to be in a mountain area. And then it'll be like within three hexes of a landmark. And then that will narrow down even more. And then basically when you've added enough clues to, to exactly where it is, that's where it is. And then you go and get it. So it's kind of like a similar kind of mechanic to Tobago. Tobago, yeah. Uh, T-O-B-A-G-O. Uh, my copy of Tobago is behind my Crimson Scales. That's nice and awkward. But I can... Yeah. Tobago. Very good game. Can recommend. Was out of print for quite a while. Don't know if you can get it much anymore. But really, really excellent like kind of family weight treasure hunting game. Really good. My box is kind of lifted. I've actually got the expansion, which came out quite recently. They, they did a, a new expansion to it like a year ago called Volcano. Haven't played it yet. Maybe that's a good reason for me to get Tobago out again. Actually, maybe I'll play Tobago tomorrow night. I've got some buddies coming around for board games tomorrow night. Maybe we can play Tobago tomorrow night. It's a great show. Okay, so I think we, we kind of get that, right? Um, if it's a curse, remove any three dousing runes that point to that hex and place one of them on that character's map. Any character with a Radiant Stone adds PS3 to all of their attacks. Cool, makes them good at fighting flame demons. Whenever any character starts their turn occupying a hex with a revealed dousing rune, they may lose one card from their hand to move it to any adjacent featureless hex. Oh, that's interesting. Whenever any character starts the turn, okay, so you can move it to make it point to what you want it to point to, maybe? At the start of the next round, and each second round after that, spawn one normal black imp at B for two characters. Blah, 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 blah. So black imps are coming as well. All right. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, well then, we know we're two hexes away here. We've got how much move? We say we've got six moves. So we've got four move left. I mean, I guess it makes sense to go as far as possible. And it has to be exactly some some range from it. So I've got so I could potentially reveal this rune with the with the fist. I think I revealed this one. Eight. Oh, end is a hex, so I can open both of them. Oh, hang on. We can do both. It's not ends your turn. So we could flip two. Ooh. Okay, that might make things a little bit different. Yeah, walking over two stones would reveal two enemies. Yes. It would. Well, I think I've done it now. I'm doing it. So actually, maybe... It, no, I shouldn't have done that. Now, I've, I... Realistically, I should go... I should probably go one, two, three... Mm. Do I want to reveal two in one go? That does... I missed the 12th one on the top left. Oh, you're right. There's one there. Good catch.
I mean, maybe revealing two enemies is fine, right? I mean, we're going to have to reveal stones. Screw it, I'm doing it. Right, so this is odd. That is a flame demon. Probably should have done the should have done a randomized standy there, but it sh shouldn't really matter, hopefully not. That goes in like an adjacent hex, right? Eight. Even. Earth Demon. So this one technically doesn't do anything, right? Hey, the 11 doesn't do anything at all, right? There's no way that the 11... Oh, it's half the value rounded up. Oh, it's half the value rounded up. Okay. So it's... It's six. And this is four. Okay. I think I understand. I was going to say, I was like, 11? There's not... This isn't 11 hexes wide. Okay. Um. Let's just put them like there. Um. Let's use electrical discharge. To attack the Earth Demon for three. Six. And a stun. And then we're going to go down, down. Okay, so this is four and this is six. So... I'm guessing it can't be in the same spot as a dousing room. A dousing room points to its own hex and all hexes are something exactly X range from it. Okay. Oh, so it can point to its own. God, that's this is all this is like it's a cool idea for a scenario for sure. But it's a bit it's a bit of a mind a mind screw, isn't it? So it could be like here, 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 here. So there's a lot that it could be. That range. For this one. Okay, so three or more. So you have to do a minimum of three anyway. Okay. Uh, does nothing. 
Um, so what were we? We were two away. So one, two, three. Do a point of damage to the flame demon. Then I guess we'll do frozen over. You want to simplify, get a bunch of different color cubes and show each space one points to. When you get three cubes. That's actually exactly how Tobago works. You have just described Tobago. That is exactly how you do it. You put cubes on and you take cubes off when they are no longer a, um, a legal spot. That is exactly how it works. But I guess the thing here is though, I could reveal as many as I want and there could be multiples. Um, that might be a good idea, though. I do have, um, I, I'm sure I've got some spare cubes lying around somewhere. We'll see how we go when we maybe get, like, the third one. See if we feel like that's necessary once we get the third one going. Um... So that's all good. Um, sorry, we wouldn't heal up, but we would clear the poison. Earth Demon does nothing. All right, next go then. So we need to... I mean, we can brittle and kill that Flame Demon, I suppose. Do you want to pay two to get a card back here? Yeah, probably. Use the ice, right? Yeah. Shard launch is going to be like MVP here. So we're going to take one because of the ward. Oh no, there's that B. Three. You remember this one? It was your fifth straight survive while doing a task and you were sick of them by then. <laughs> yeah. Make kill all enemies in the dungeon great again. <laughs> See if we can kill that flame demon and maybe reveal one more. First things first, Mountain's Fist. No XP for me, but it seems like a good time. We've got Brittle on it, so. Plus one, so that's gonna be four times two. I think that's enough. So that's gonna die. If the enemy killed, do a heal three self, which did die. And then we'll do cold boulder. Um, <sighs> so 
mean, I can move up to five here. It makes me feel like I should shoot off of Tarun because I can use this as a plus one move because of my, um, my perk. One. One, two, three, four, five. And reveal two more. It's a lot of extra enemies to put onto the board, huh? I don't want to rush this scenario. It feels like you're, I could be rushing here. Maybe it's better to do that. Yeah. Ten. Which I think is, uh... Earth Dune, right? I guess the problem here is you need to have these flipped up. Like, you need to have them visible. Like, it's a bit annoying if you're on the space. Uh, 10 is an Earth Dune, I believe. Three. Earth demons, we might just be able to kind of like run around and not worry about. I mean, they, they can be annoying, but they're also very, very slow. Um, I'll put them like at the edges so that you need to move around in the middle. Okay, should we get some cubes? I feel like that was a great idea. Or I could just shoot dice for this purpose. I've got a bunch of dice here. Okay. So let's... I mean, if I'm going to do like one rune at a time, we can kind of figure it out that way. So this is four. So. Like I said, so. If we start with one, I guess, and then we kind of go from there. I can always use like the different pips to maybe signify different relics if we really need to. But it's essentially this, isn't it? I guess it could be there. And then what we'll do is we'll take them off when we do check the other ones. Okay, so this is uh, rounded up, right? This is six, so. So all of these would be out. So all of these would be out. that's range six hang on one two three four five this is the only one that's range six there's only one that's range six no that's five as well so the clues the clues don't match up is what we're saying right and it's not quite as simple as that i can't quite i can't quite do it that that way So basically, if I move that 11, that would be quite good. So this is the one we should aim for, right? Hang on, that is six away. One, two, three. No, it's not, it's five. I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four. It's gotta be six, yeah. So six. So if I push this one hex this way, 
This hex would be all of them. Maybe this is a better way of doing it. The white di di dice should be four-way. I don't understand what you mean by four-way. I can either keep revealing or not. The white dice should be four away. Yeah, they are, right? Well, that's three away. I, I set this line too far back. I set that line too far back, huh? I need to reveal at least nine. Yeah, yeah. It's this one. I just need to move this there. Simples. Also, runes point to themselves. Oh, sure. So you'd say that there's a rune. In theory, you could say that, okay, this is, this is also a one. But that, I don't think that matters for this one, right? Necessarily. I think the plan would be to try and go for this one. But the thing is, you have to waste a lot of resources to do that, right? Need more information? I don't think you do. I mean, I could flip another one and maybe narrow it down so that I could ignore the 11. So the, the, the two options that I have is that I can basically waste, let's say waste. I could use a turn to get 11 to move, right? That's a turn. Or I could maybe reveal one more. And then let's say I reveal this. And this one is, let's hope, a relatively lo low number, right? Let's hope it's a six. Or a five would also do that. That would work. So I could try and reveal, or I could try and reveal this one, which would potentially narrow down more as well. I could flip one more and then just use the 11 as a future one, right? The room where there is a stone will point to itself when you reach it. Yeah. Moving runes is expensive, a card. It is, but I mean, you have to do a card to pick up a rune. So it's not like, and to be fair, like the, you only need to find three. I think maybe we reveal one more. Um, so I'm on this rune here. Hmm. 
Moving rune is lose. True, just say lose. Just say lose, yeah. That is makes it much more expensive, you're right. Okay, we won't be doing that then. I mean, you do that as a last chance, like we needed to win the game sort of, sort of deal, I guess. All right, let's do, um, let's just attack with the top of Magnetic Field. Um, what's this guy on? Seven health. Attack for four. If you get immobilized, that's going to be really crap, actually, huh? Look at that immobilized. That would be really bad here. Uh, we are in low, so we're going to increase up to regular, heal ourselves for three, and gain an XP. Did not mean to press that. Yes. Um. We'll use B Max to move four. Then. What's he doing? He's immobilizing everything within range two. He's healing himself for four. I mean, the imp's going to heal him up massively anyway. I feel like getting this middle one's pretty important. I guess we're going to get immobilized there, actually, which is going to suck. Oh, it's a three. Oh, that means it's two. Okay. Okay. That is a flame demon, though. Okay. Um... So that means that it's basically two. Has to, it's this one then. It is here. There's this place. This is, this is legit. This one points to here. This one points to here. This one points to here. Right? So we can all kind of agree that that's, and also it would reveal a new one, which I guess is good. Kind of two birds, one stone type deal. Man, it's so annoying not being able to kind of quite put my characters in the right spots, but. And I gain Pierce forever. Yeah, Pierce is going to be quite nice. I do have Ancient Drill, though. I was planning to use that this next turn. Okay, good. All right, Flame Demon is gonna, I mean, I guess drop back at this stage. It's gonna attack me for three. It's gonna be four, but with the, that, it's only gonna be three. It's fire. Oh, this guy's gonna heal himself up for four. Uh, this guy is going to, unfortunately, going to consume that and is going to immobilize Hammer, which does really blow. Like, I feel like immobilize is probably one of the worst possible conditions you could have here. Um, he's just going to heal him up for two, right? Okay, um, we'll pay... Yeah, we'll pay two health there. Okay, not too bad. Not too shabby. Um, I have a really late turn right now, though. Mm. 
When can I use the snow imp on my on a turn, right? Can I use the snow imp at any time? What are they called? Like, I don't know, pets? They're called pets, right? Page 36. Pets. Okay, you have to use it on your turn. Okay, yeah. That makes more sense. But any character can use it. It's just a really awkward late kind of turn here, which I don't really love. Maybe I should short rest. It's kind of like a short rest type scenario, isn't it? Kind of is. I just hate this initiative that I have right now. I don't think it matters for Hammer, to be fair. I just don't want to get absolutely clobbered, you know? Let's short rest. Short rest on drill. You know, I'm not immobilized. I think like the worst thing that could happen is I go late, I get immobilized, I can't get the thing, it just sucks, you know? Yeah, super heat transfer. That's a pretty good one. It gets my thing up quickly, but could be worse. Okay, now we've got a full grip. That's good. So we need to give up a turn, right? Um, we'll go a top action. Okay. So what's a good bomb action to do right now? Kind of isn't one, really. You'd probably argue that Super Heat Transfer was probably the one. Perhaps I just use Bronze Plating as a default move two. And we give up the old uh, B Max. Sure. Draw. Ooh, yikes. All right, I guess we're getting attacked. I'm getting attacked for two. Three. Make a fire. Okay, easy, easy. Default move two. That's gonna flip this, right? So we flip the 12. Um, but I'm gonna forgo my top action to basically pick up the, the thing. So we've got one. So I pick up the relic in that place, right? Any three dousing runes that point to it. Oh, I guess if this points to it as well, I could remove that one instead, right? Instead of the three. The three is probably a pretty nice one to have in the middle, actually. Um, so this points to itself. So I could remove this one, right? 
Should I remove the 12? Because it's a 6 and 6. And keep the 3? Because that's probably a bit more beneficial. I think I remove... I think I remove this rune. This one. And this one, right? I think so. I still have to spawn the Earth Demon, I guess. But that seems... You know, the keeping the three there... It's a good idea. Corner again. Okay, so now I, I have permanent... Permanent PS3. And we have one out of three done. Okay. Right, Earth Demon's doing nothing. I guess attacking the Earth Demons is really pointless, huh? Uh, Black Imp is going to attack me for one with poison, which is a bit annoying, actually. Oh, actually, he's got the fire, so he's going to do target two. Yeah, he's going to do target two. Me first, no extra times two. So it's going to be... Uh, no damage but poison here. And then two, one damage here with poison. Okay. <clears throat> In general, you don't like mechanics to make you forego actions to do some guess. It feels bad to play cards but not do your actions. Um, I think like... I think, didn't you mention earlier, Skizzy, that you had a, a problem where you kind of had multiple scenarios in a row that really kind of had, um, you know, run around, do stuff style mechanics rather than necessarily attack monsters. I feel like it's a bit of a problem with Frosthaven. I, I think I mentioned it before that sometimes you just need to let the characters play as the characters right there's a lot you have a lot of fun with figuring out what cards to take at level ups what items to buy as complementary items to your build working out the correct ordering what your enhancements might be for your cards the core game of the haven series revolves around the classes the characters and the cards that they have and how each one is unique interesting in different ways and I think you raise a v and you raise a very good point where quite often in Frosthaven you're asked to play your character not as your character but almost as like a bit of a blank slate character right I mean sure I'm going to have a few abilities here and there on my characters that will have some level of um usefulness more so than maybe others in this scenario but you're right when you're when you're put into a situation where it's like just forego a top action to do this well, that automatically will make the characters who maybe have like big move bottoms or move bottoms combined with other things will make that playstyle very strong. Whereas maybe a character who's really good at doing damage is going to like feel like, well, I'm sort of I'm having to weigh up here attacking an enemy versus progressing the objective of the scenario. So I do agree with you. I think that there is... In Frosthaven, there's a uh, there's often a tendency for them to make the um, to make the scenarios a little bit too clever for their own good sometimes, um, and certainly uh, certainly at something like this, I think it's an interesting com complicated scenario. But if you don't have like a, another component to use to try and map this thing out. It's kind of difficult, right? Um, and Frosthaven is meant to be the more complicated version of Gloomhaven. You know, that, that is what it's billed as. You know, the advanced version. 
but sometimes you just gotta let the characters be their characters. You gotta let them go around smashing stuff, doing whatever they're doing. It doesn't feel good to play a character and then realize that you just can't really play the mechanics. On a positive note, the Maiden Second Edition is much better about this, as even Gripe has criticized this part of Frosted. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that he would, um, because let's put it this way. I've been thinking a lot about guides for different characters for Frosthaven. You know, how am I going to do my guides? And I've done one and I'm kind of thinking like, how do I really want to do this? And when do I feel comfortable to do, do more character guides now that I've played it? I don't think I can do character guides in the same way that I did character guides for Gloomhaven because of the way this game makes you play. It makes you play differently. Every scenario is some crazy um, goal that needs to be completed and it's so difficult to say in Frosthaven, oh, you should take this card at this level up, you should have this item, you should do this. It's like, it's not as black and white as it was in Gloomhaven where you can quite clearly say, well, if you want to play the ranged build, you do this. There is still an element of that. You can say, well, if you want to focus on this element of the character, you do this, you want to focus on this element of the character, but you really do need to keep yourself flexible. And maybe that's also a symptom of me playing two player where I really need to keep my characters flexible because if I don't, I could come up against a scenario that I just physically can't do because I just don't, my characters can't do it. Like if I'm not careful, it could be possible. Um, probably unlikely, but, but possible. So there is something, something there for sure. Um, and, you know, I did, for a period of time, I was similar to you. I was getting a bit frustrated with Frosthaven because I felt like every single scenario had to have some crazy wrinkle in it that just, especially when you're learning a character, you just want to learn figure out how to play well. You don't want all these extra special rules to think about. You're just trying to concentrate on playing the character. You just really don't want to have to think about, okay, I'm playing the character, but also there's another game within the game within the game and what have you. You can definitely see people getting confused by the special rules in this scenario. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the fact that I have played Tobago really helps me out. Because immediately as I was like, oh, it's Tobago. I love Tobago. Okay, great. I know what I'm doing. If you haven't played Tobago though, you might be like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but it's a very, I mean, I will say it's very similar. Like there's definitely, if, if Tobago has not been listed as an inspiration for this scenario, I would be very surprised. Um, Okay, let me think. Can't really do anything on Hammer, can I? That was the kind of problem here, really. I guess I could shard launch and just try and kill the imp or put some damage on the imp to try and capture it. Or kill it, vice versa. Sure. I guess I'll, uh, I'll do a disadvantage attack against that. Um, Earth Demon, number three, that's two damage. The aspect doesn't feel so bad, you're flipping. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing full player, you, you, you've got more, much more flexibility. Um, Okay, right. Let's figure this bit out now. So we've got one that's 11 and one that's three right now. So we can't really, there's probably no point in really doing anything until we narrow another one down, right?
We may as well just flip another one. And ideally one that's within three of this. One that's within, well, not three, but within two, right? Within two of this and within six of this. Not possible. Okay. So then we should just try and find one that's probably two from this. Hmm. I probably should have taken away the three, shouldn't I? Maybe I should have taken away the three. Because the three is a weird one. Because it really... It's not in a great spot, if you think about it. It means I can't necessarily... I'm going to have to reveal two more, basically. Because of that decision. I guess it kind of is what it is. Gonna have to flip two more. If I'd left the... Was it the 12 or whatever it was here? If I'd left the 12 there... Then you'd have a 6 and a 6. Let's be honest, that's probably pretty incompatible anyway. Yeah, I would have been incompatible anyway. That's fine. We've got two within two, right? Probably pretty good. Three has less range. Doesn't that narrow your choices down? Yeah, maybe I'm thinking about it the wrong way. I was thinking more so that, like... I had it in my mind that I was trying to get it to try and do what I just did, which is to, like go on a spot and take it right so it would be really great if this pointed to another stone or another um rune but it it doesn't or at least it doesn't right now it's fine we'll figure it out um i think i'm probably going to short rest on fist next turn Yeah, I was. I, I, I don't. I suppose I shouldn't get too caught up on that, uh, Coop, because it's it's not that big a deal. We we will find. You know, I'm sure it will happen ag again. Ideally, you want one that was like, yeah, within range six of this and within range two of that, and then you're you're on, right? You just you just flip it and you've done it. Second one done. I guess in a way, this is quite an RNG type scenario too, right? Because if you do get that... Mm, voice from below. That is a good heal, but to be fair, we are going to want to move a lot. We can get rid of that. Just put him back again. Back you go, mate. I do want to try and capture that with the trainer's net. I guess I could try and flip this one because that does give me some nice wiggle room. But if you think, I should look at what numbers I've taken off the board as well, really, shouldn't I? I've taken off 10, 12, big numbers, and 8. 10, 12, and 8. Big numbers, right? So, we, we're, we're probably, we're odds on here to get something like, and 11's already out there, right? So we're odds on to get 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7... So 
So maybe it's good to try and get some of these edge ones. I like that idea. Reveal the middle one. Could do. Yeah, okay. Oops, not you. You. You feel like three to six with two to three range are probably the most helpful numbers. Yeah. You'd think that that would allow you to now, and also like travel wise, it means you wouldn't have to like you know, dart to the other end of the board, right? The groups are gonna run to the other end of the board just to get, get it done. I think maybe I can reveal two this round. We'll see. Maybe a bit risky, but I kind of felt like I should go for the risky plays here. Right, so we're going to move two. That is a six. Another Earth Demon. Jesus, the Earth Demons are coming out to play, huh? Is it better to get Earth Demons now or later? It's probably... It's probably worse to have them now, to be honest, isn't it? You don't really want... Earth Demons this early on. Gives them more time to kind of just... be on the board and their slow movement could hurt you. Um... Okay, so we've got Retaliate, which is good. Probably doesn't really matter. Then we're going to use Mountain's Fist. We'll consume this ice. We'll get ourselves an XP. And we will slam the Imp. Get smashed. Uh, that is also now going to let us to heal for three. Or oh, I need to do another heal for my regenerate. Um, create Earth. So, six. So that's three away. So I guess we're looking at this sort of end of the board now. could point to itself. I think like, we still need to reveal one more, don't we, before we can really make any more judgments. Still need one more. I need to figure out how to this stop my screen from locking on this tablet. Thought middle could be an option. Hmm. Well, it, it would work. Actually, right right now it would work because it points to itself, this points to it, and this points to it. So that would be a reveal. That would be a stone. That's a good that's a good catch. Because that would be a stone. Okay, well, we, we can run over there, right? It's kind of like what I was thinking of doing. Oh, I can't, I've got enough movement to get over there. 
Oh, I have, but I'd have to stun myself. That's fun. Um... What number was that? Number four. I think we're ignoring the Earth Demons now. I think it's fair to say. Mm, could use a Snow Imp, right? Right now. Could use a Snow Imp. Snow Imp do for me? It gets me within range to do it on the drill, so the drill gets the second one. Then we remove that one, that one, that one. Then we have this one here. And we probably go down here next. The 11 is the worst one, right? So bad. Probably not wise to stun yourself, no. I should use the Snow Imp. It's just a case of, do I use the Snow... Do I also tactically here reveal one more? Or do I kind of just get away? I'm going to use the Snow Imp. So now everyone can move, can do a move to action in initiative order. So Hammer's got to go first. But I'm just thinking I can kind of like sneakily get away a little bit from damage here. Or I got like one, two, three or something. Get myself close. Because I feel like this is going to be a good one to get. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to overthink it too much. Let's try that. Did I heal myself up? I don't think I did. Okay, well, in that instance, then, we're just going to be literally moving and just taking this, then. We're going to move it. We're going to flip it. Ooh, is that the 1 or a 7? Is that a 7 or a 1? That's a 7. Okay, so we're going to remove this, we're going to remove this one, and we remove this one. Got a lot of low numbers to come out. I'm just going to keep this over here as well so I can... Actually, I'll just show you guys. I'll put it on camera. I don't know why I haven't got it on camera. But you can see what numbers we've drawn and we've taken off the board. I mean, we know that we've got the pierce. So if you have a look at the, at the numbers that we can get, right? For this last one, I mean... If these two are... Really low. We're looking for the five. Looking for the one or the two. No, sorry, we're looking for the three. 
The three's there. Looking for the four. Five and four. Do it. Easy. <laughs> um, so flame demons are going to do their thing. This flame demon is going to attack here with disadvantage. That's uh, so a two. Just two, because I don't have anything else, right? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what I could have done. I could have used my ma I could have used my major frenzy potion to just kill it there, right? Because I would have had like PS3. I'm gonna do that. Why am I not doing that? I should just remove them from the board. Perfect. There's no, it's like, I'm just unnecessarily taking damage. I got the pierce, so. So that would have been, uh, yeah, so I need to, it would have been minus one to. To hammer. And then that, so no damage. No, one damage, sorry. Uh, then this guy's gonna go. He's gonna attack for, with a plus zero. It's gonna be three damage. Two attacks there. Minus one, zero, so that's gonna be. Oh god, he's poisoned. Shoot. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. I mean, I guess we win next turn, potentially. Well, we probably don't, but we have to get incredibly lucky to win next turn, but... Oh, did I did this wrong. I did this wrong person, didn't I? There we go. Um. Okay. Oh, whenever you suffer damage this round, suffer one less. Did I do that or not? No, I had to retaliate up, didn't I? Yeah. I get. Oh, I guess I did retaliate damage to these guys, but I'm not going to worry about that because I didn't. Uh, I don't really need it. I'm not I'm not killing them. I'm not even gonna attack them, most likely. Let's jump on a token, should we? You never know. Could we? We could. We could end it on this turn, depending on what we flip. So ten. Right. First things first. Let's flip a token, shall we? Um, nine. That's not a good number. That's not the one we wanted to see. Should be a low number. Shoot.
That's annoying. Okay. I guess we shard launch just to get some stuff doing. Nine and three points to several hexes, yeah. It might be good to map this one out actually because we can potentially those three right mm -hmm. so if this is a if this is a that's a four a five would be good a four, a five. A one or a two is bad at this stage. I think the nine's actually irrelevant. So what do we got? Five, seven, eight, nine. There is zero token? No. Got one, two, four, five. No. One, two, four, five. Um, I guess in an ideal world here, then we want to flip this one, don't we? Because it's going to give us the best chance of hitting this one or this one. Do I just need one more? Yeah. I'll play shard launch and I'll just draw two. I just wanted to get the ice out there. I don't care about dealing the damage. I'll give the guys extra health. It's all good. I think I've used the crude boots too. I think I used them earlier. I just forgot to exhaust them. Just need one more, yeah. But unfortunately, I can't do it this round. Actually, that's tell us a lie. It might be able to do it this round. Well, I've got, I only got three though, right? Am I in high? I am. So I can go one, two, three, four. If it's that one, then we win this round. If it's not that one, then I can always just magnetic anyway. Get the heal two that I kind of want. Use a stamina potion, spyglass, whatever I want. Yeah, I mean, I'd go for it, right? So we're going to use rocket boost, move four. One, two. So what are we hoping for? We're hoping for... The four. Ideally. Ideally. 
That's awkward. <clears throat> what are the move room rules? Lose the car, but don't spend an action. Um, yes, you lose one card from your hand at the beginning of your turn. So yeah, I could, on, for, in theory, on the next round, I could just move it at the beginning of my turn, right? That's if I stay there, though. I guess I could stay there. I mean, I could use Magnetic Field here anyway, just to, to loot one. Yeah, let's just do that. Loot one. Consume the ice to heal the poison off. What number was that one? That was a two. So we need to put an earth demon in as well. You know, you're running out of earth demon standees. That's a first. Five. Only one more standee to go, boys. getting wounded here I do not like uh, two times on fist so what's that two damage to fist I won't put the wound because he's basically Im immune to it Am I getting attacked by the Earth Demons too? I am? Bro. I may have just uh, been far too aggressive. I should have just killed stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna have to burn a card. What do I mean he's immune to wound? So he has one with the mountain, which says whenever you do not have regenerate, gain regenerate. So basically I permanently have regenerate. And at the beginning of my turn, you can choose the ordering of effects. So I would choose that regenerate triggers before the wound, therefore healing the wound. So although technically I guess I have the wound condition, if, there, if something needed me to have the wound condition, but in theory, I never take any damage to wound. So it's kind of like a, it's it's kind of like immunity via a roundabout way of doing it. Okay, well, I'm kind of happy with that for now i need to burn that card right i think i'm burning two for my discard but then it doesn't really matter because we just win next turn right 
doesn't really matter. We get three and then we just need to fist to survive, which is easily doable. Um, sure. Sure. Oh, he's going to sit on there, actually. That's bad for me, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I could have spawned this guy over here, which probably would have been a better idea thinking about it. Then there's the choice of where he moves to, right? Technically, this guy would go there. Oh, actually, I think it doesn't matter. I think he has to go there. Bugger. Ruined, chat. That ain't good. I'm guessing they can go on those spots, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna use thick skins to not take any damage there, I think. I might have just screwed this up, you know? This is very possible that I have just screwed this up. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Didn't think about them moving onto the spot. I didn't really ever process that. And now, like, I'm thinking, well, I could move a card, couldn't I? Which is true, I could. To move the... the that thing a bit closer but it doesn't actually get me anywhere and actually i would just be out of cards anyway but it would have given me the win is there any way of pushing him oh i do have a way of pushing him so i could swoop him with the fist maybe Rest with fist as well because we're just going to be burning cards for damage here, probably. Just you sweeping on that spot and win, right? Yeah, basically. But I think I need, it's the end of the round, though, right? Yeah, I have to survive the round, which uh, might be a bit tough. Move rune is start of turn, so fist must go first. No, fist must go second, because fist is going to be the one to pick up the rune. Ooh, 16. That's a move four. Do I need to move four? I need to move five. I don't have it. Did I use those crude boots or not? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. I'm, I'm crossing at straws here, chat. Uh, please, please say I didn't do it. Did I use them or not? I think I did. Because I used the snow imp to move from here to like here. I think I did. I don't have enough movement.
What's an alternative option here? I don't think I have push on my fists. I have a pull. Which is also awkwardly one hex, not long, not long enough. If the fist moves his rune one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking now. If he moves his rune this way. To here, let's say. So let's say this was here instead. But it still needs to be... That's in the right spot. But it's not within two of this. I don't think that changes it. Because you'd need to go... You need to move them both. Why are some tokens dice and some are numbers? So the dice are representing, this is not an official component or of any kind, but the dice are representing possible locations for the, 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 um, the shards. Based on these two. So within five of this, within um, two of this. This token is a two, so it needs to be within one because it's rounded down. It's half rounded uh, up, sorry. Half rounded up, but it's a one. But the, essentially it needs to go onto there. I'll tell you what, this tablet is doing my head in. I actually kind of preferred having the, the phone at this rate. Just keeps locking. Does that make sense? Both move their runes, you think it works? Mm, I don't know if it does, because the only the only logical place for me to move this then would be here. If I move this to here, it works, but it's here would still be within four. So it wouldn't work. There's This is the only place this could move. I Could I move this closer? No, because then it makes it even harder. 
unless you say this is where the rune is, but then you, this is not close enough either. So you can't make them meet that way. I don't think I can do it. It's just range, right? Yeah, it's just range. Because you can do it here, which is fine. That's now within range five. Great. This is still within range five, but the key point is that it doesn't link with this, which is within range two of that. And I can only move it one hex. I can't move it any more than one hex. I think I just can't do it this round. I mean, it's okay. I could, if they draw like a heal turn, then it's fine. I just do it on the following turn. I probably run away afterwards. All's good, you know? It's just if I had one more piece of movement, I could do it. I mean, either way, Drill is dead this round. I think. I can move the rune, I can push that guy off there, then we've definitely got a spot. Then it's just a case of like self-preservation on the fist, really. Like fist, try and stay alive. Do all you can. Oh, actually, if I can create, can I create ice? No. Mm. Capture the imp yet? No, I don't need to capture the, I, I don't think if I, I will be able to, to be honest looking unlikely that I get the chance to capture the imp. Okay, I think I think we know that we we know that we can't quite do it. Like we, we just know we can't quite do it. That's which is fine. Um, let's just play to Play to live. Okay, so on the beginning, so my hammer, I'm just gonna go, go for a move four. Oh, if we're clever here, we can probably avoid taking quite a bit of damage actually. We're only moving one, right? And these guys are doing the straight lines. I guess I could try and go for the capture here, though, couldn't I? Do we full, do we full greed it? Go 
go like here. The problem is that then this guy's just going to walk onto it, which is not what you want. Basically, I just have the same problem on the next round. Oh, actually, no, he won't because he's going to go for... Oh, no, he will because he wants to do the multi-target attack. God damn it. Honestly, I think I just have to go there. And I'm not quite sure why I did that in the ordering that I did. I probably should have gone after the... I mean, I avoid taking most damage there, I think. I'm going to end up taking a couple of hits, aren't I? Probably two hits. Okay, whatever. Ah, uh, we're shielding up anyway. Uh, move there. So we're going to consume, we're going to lose a card to move this to here. Then we are going to do default move to whatever. Or actually, I could pull them, right? Is that a good idea? No, probably not. Just stay there. And just attack for three and push. Ooh. Okay. Basically, we're dead uh, on that character. No damage, but a poison. Oh, consumes the earth, though. To attack again. No, it doesn't kill him. Minus one. These guys don't do anything. Oh, no, sorry. This guy can attack. Damn it. I thought for some strange reason he, one of them couldn't attack. Three because of the shield. I do have a bunch of cards in hand, but it's just, oh man, it's down to the wire. Uh, lots of movement here then. Well, he can't really move. He's just going to attack him. Burn two dis discarded cards, I guess. Stay in it for now. What's that? Two. It's gonna be three. Two. No, three, one. Burn a card. Uh, so take one. Minus one, right? Because it's attack two. This is a one poison. Two. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, uh, uh. Right, okay, okay. 
you just collect and run away next turn, right? No, he cannot. He'll have to end his turn there. Uh, end of the round. Four dice, because got no cards. I guess we just hope for a heal turn. I'll probably just short rest to get one of these two cards back just so I have one. Yeah, I think we can just about do this. Why is Fist not able to collect one right now? Because he didn't have enough movement to get to that spot. I was one movement shy of being able to do it that round. It was close, but... Close, but no cigar. Just a nice do nothing round, please. Not really. Collect. Well, horrible, horrible end. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe we get this or not, but first, I've gotten lucky not getting the four or the five in one of those. I didn't have enough movement, Skizzy. That's the main thing. I just didn't have enough physical... Physically, I did not have enough movement. And I tried moving all the pieces around as much as possible. I just physically did not have enough movement. Um, okay. That's it, right? They go in there, and then we just we just hope we don't die. Okay, well that's a crit because of this, so we lose a card. First time that's come to bite to bite us, right? I think I've lost. You know, I don't think I can survive. Because these are all just going to get me. And I'm getting attacked, but oh, I'm not getting attacked by them. I guess I have to phase... One, two, three, four, five attacks. And I can... Burn through three. One's got a miss. How much damage is it? Two. Three, because of the poison. GG's. One movement. Oh, one movement. I probably could have played that way safer. I probably just went too hard on it, to be honest. I probably just went way too hard on that scenario. Like, if I'd just been more patient... I always find that I do tend to, in these scenarios, where I have the option to, like, oh, you can finish this really quick if you just do these things, I have a tendency to just do it. Um, and I don't think that's good in this scenario. I think if I was more patient and if I just went... Yeah, maybe killed a couple of the flame demons. Like, I feel like the earth demons you can't really kill. And maybe I did get unlucky with the numbers that I flipped in terms of them all being evens early on.
Yeah, one point of movement. I did get unlucky in the last token reveal, though. I mean, I I had a... I had a 50, it was a 50-50, right? If I'd flipped the 4 or the 5, we were fine. It was basically the 1 or the 2 I couldn't flip. Needed to be the 4 or the 5. I was probably like... I was. I don't think I was even even, so I was probably un, un, I was not unlucky, I would say. I was probably not odds on to get that in terms of like as a random draw. And this scenario is, he, borrows heavily from Tobago, man. It really does. It really does. It's kind of like a fun one, but it's another one of these weird scenarios where like if you don't have another component that the game does not provide you with to do, um... Doesn't really work out, does it? It makes it much more difficult. You need to have something else to to, uh, to really help you. Some people are going to hate this scenario, man. I didn't hate it because I like Tobago, um, but some people are really not going to like this scenario. I would think. What to do with the bottom action for last time? Moved. If I'd seen more of the tokens at once and could have divided them up, like if the last six reward runes were on, were on at the same time. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Just intrigued if I would have actually... I would have died many times over. Miss was there eventually, but... Hmm. Didn't use my stamina potion up there. That's a mistake. And it all came down to that usage of the frost thing. I used it... Greedily earlier on, and I probably shouldn't have used the snow imp when I did. Frost gem. Yeah, it's an interesting one, this scenario. Like, I don't dislike it. But it's very... Like, I, I, I can see this being quite a polarizing scenario. Like, you could get really kind of bad token flips and bad RNG from the monsters as well. Like, you know, that round there, I win if it's a... I win if some of the monsters don't attack, you know? If the Earth Demons draw the heal there, if the Black Imp doesn't attack, I, I win there. And I know that, that factors into a lot of scenarios, to be fair. Um, it happens in many scenarios in Frosthaven and Gloomhaven, that it comes down to a flip. But, um... Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the concept of scenario. I don't think I'll be replaying this one. I don't think I have the... I don't think I have the... the feeling of replaying it. I mean, I, I, I need to in the sense that I have to to complete the thing, but I coming so close and just coming up short by one point of movement on a previous turn... Um, I don't, I'm not going to replay, I think. I'll just say that we completed it. We don't get our battle goals. You know, I'll kind of cross off some progress. No battle goals, no loot, but it'll go down as a, a win so we can at least move on, I think. Because um, it's it's not a bad scenario, but it's certainly not one that I would love to replay. It's just, yeah. It's also a scenario that is... I would say inherently harder at two player than four, right? In terms of going for the speed aspect. Now, if you're playing at two, um, if you're playing at three and four, you get like elite demons, so they're a bit harder, right? But if you're not killing the demons and you get good RNG with them doing nothing anyway, I feel like this scenario is weighted more towards a four person party. 
because you can really You know, you could really just like uh, flip tokens a bit more freely. You sort of need to take the item reward for the scenario. For I mean, if there's a, if there, yeah, I mean, if there's any, I, any, sorry, yeah, any scenario specific rewards for completing, I will take, because yes, they usually, and this is a main story mission, so there'll be some consequence to that. So yeah, I will do that. But I, I, what I mean is, I won't take any additional loot that I've gathered or the battle goals that I've done or the um or the challenge or anything like that right it'll be purely just whatever the game needs to give me to progress um yeah so so it's a it's a weird one I also don't like the uh, I didn't like the vibe of just chucking two shrike fiends in the beginning of the scenario because you know what shrike fiends like, I thought maybe they might have some more of a... Uh, I mean, they, I guess they they do have, like, a, a thematic place in this story arc, but they did seem a little bit random at the start. But it has been a while since I've come back to this thing. I suppose this did spur off of Raven's Roost or whatever it was, which was a Shrike Fiend mission, but, yeah. Just seemed a bit strange. It was like, <gasps> Shrike Fiends! And then it was like we'd, like, we'd never seen them before. It's like, dude see them like every other scenario at this point in the campaign <laughs> yeah not a, not a bad one not a bad one at all just a bit a um just not like one that it will be particularly fun to replay i don't think so i'm not gonna if i'd come up way shorter i think i would replay it um just because then i would be a bit more I'd be, I'd be a little bit more conscious of like my strategy or something. Like if I come up really, really short, I felt like, oh, I really played that wrong. Like I just, I didn't understand it. I didn't play it right. I just didn't get it. Then I felt like then it's a good time to replay it. But when you're in a situation like this, you come up like literally one point of movement short, a couple of bad flips at the end. You know, replaying it will just be me replaying it to satisfy the game. Um, you know, I know what I need to do to win. And we got, I think we got, in terms of the token placement, I think we got pretty good RNG for the token placement, apart from that one right at the very end. But, I mean, we did get, I would say, pretty good luck up to that point. I, I didn't feel like we were making, we were getting hard done by. And in fact, it was looking at one point, we, we might not even need to move a single token. Um, and perhaps moving that token was a mistake, or, or focusing in on moving that token, perhaps that was a mistake. Perhaps I should have, you know, gone, okay, it's not going to work. Go and flip another token and see if we can find that one to work. But like slowed it down and done that maybe rather than you know, feel like, oh, I need to win in the next couple of turns. How do I do that? Maybe I could have wasted a little bit more time wait you know, until it was a little bit sure. It's a cool scenario. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly cool scenario, but... I said, I think if you've played Tobago, uh, Tobago's better. <laughs> of course it is, because it's a whole game revolving around this mechanic. But uh, it did it. It did it pretty well. It did a pretty good job. I'm just annoyed that I don't get my two check marks. I was so happy that I got that Slayer check two check marks so quickly early on. Right, should we do the scenario? I'll put scenario failed so that we don't get any any bonuses there. But we will play the audio. Working in the north for as long as you have. You'd think snow would be the last thing you'd want to see. And yet, here you are, drenched in sweat, flame coursing around you, and all you want is a nice three-day blizzard. But you found it, the last stone. You cleave through the flame demons, snatch up the final orange rock, 
and dash free of the cave. The fresh air is incredible. The demons, though fierce, do not give pursuit. And so, with your stash of heat stones now secure, you make your way gladly back to Frosthaven. All right. Yeah, you're right. There is a reward for uh, how many we didn't flip. Well, we did not flip three. So that would be five experience points each for each unrevealed dousing room. So that would be 15 bonus XP. Which is a, oh, a lot of bonus XP. And then gain ember energy source item 244. Ember energy source. During your turn, increase the printed attack, move, target, or range numerical value on one of your abilities by one. Interesting. That's pretty cool. I mean, I don't see what world you're not choosing target, but okay. <laughs> okay. Range and an attack all enemies at range X card. Yeah, maybe. Um, right, so XP wise, we'll get a bonus 15. That'll be up to 213. Uh, 205. Oh, no level up there. Well, tell that makes the scenario reading so much better. Yeah, I really wouldn't um, play without it, Bacon. I just can't. Now, now I've started using it, I just can't not use it. I've already pre-ordered the Gloomhaven 2nd Edition one. Because I was like, yep, game changer for me. I think that's, if I wasn't playing solo, it might be a bit different because I will say that one of the highlights of playing Gloomhaven with my buddies tabletop was one of my buddies putting on silly voices for when he was reading the different characters and then trying to remember which silly voice he did for which character. So then we would have various characters changing voices between weeks because he couldn't remember which voice he used for which character. So I'll say that like you do get robbed of uh, that enjoyment. But solo, oh yeah, no way. I don't want to have to do all that reading on my own. <laughs> you can kind of just, I can just listen to it while I like, you know, pack up or move on to the next section. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think we'll give the Ember Energy Source to the um, the drill. It's a good call. Definitely got the most impact cards. Okay then, let's do ourselves a quick outpost phase, shall we? We also need to add that thing to the calendar uh, within three weeks. Calendar in three weeks. Oh no, there's already something there. One, three, five. Kind of stupid for me that I wrote that so big. Why, why did I write that so big? Uh, 62.2. Okay. So 
Big scenario two, beat you down on the first attempt. Really? Scenario two was the... What was scenario two? Scenario one is like when you just rock into Frosthaven, right? Was that 142? 144. I should probably not cross out until I've actually done it. That would be smart. <laughs> Should we do a raid today? We can do a raid today, Phantom. Why not? Okay. The library is crowded as it always is. Edeka has created a love of learning in the populace. Teenagers have made the library a gathering place, and several men and women have taken a particular liking to the company of the attractive resident librarian. She shoos the assembled crowd out as you arrive with the tome you found in hand. <clears throat> Sorry, all. Business to take care of. We'll need to resume our book discussions later today. Several teens shoot you dirty looks as they make their way toward the door. Edeka politely waits for them to shuffle out. That's the name. Then locks the door behind them with surprising speed. She turns to you, clapping her hands with excitement onto the moss-bound tome. <gasps> you found she flips through with a speed unbefitting a volume in such worn condition, finally stopping on a page that appears as undecipherable as the rest. Yes, it's here at the most incredible fell. I just need test subjects. She looks downright giddy. <laughs> it's blood magic. Oh, I can't wait to try it. She absentmindedly brushes the dust off her skirt while scanning her finger down the page. I'll need two volunteers. One of you will get stronger and the other weaker. Conservation of vitality and all. What? A tome of life. Please select a decision. Offer two party members. Ask etiquette to... What? What kind of an options is this? Okay, well, I'll put the poll up for you guys. This is kind of spicy. Alright, which option... A and option B. Uh, okay. So vote for option A if you want to offer two party members. Vote for option B if you would like to ask Edeka to join as well. Kind of a weird one. Well, at least we got some gold that scenario, though. That was kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Mm -mm -mm. The doors distracted you and there were several two times draws. <sighs> Oof, nasty. Option B. Oh, interesting. Okay, you want to ask Etika to join. Okay. That's what you guys want. You encourage Etika to join the ritual just in case. At her instruction, you stand on two runes drawn with salt on the hardwood floor. She completes the majority of the incantation from behind her desk, but joins you for the last few words, stepping into the salt circles. There goes, she says, finishing the spell and shutting her eyes tightly. It doesn't seem to hurt. Ah, there it is. Edeka collapses with a gasp to the floor. When she reopens her eyes, she smiles. It worked. It worked. Okay, well... For the next scenario, the selected character raises their maximum hit point value by two. Uh, well, I guess we should have selected someone first, right? Drill, I guess. I guess we should give Drill. It might be better to give it to Hammer, but to be honest, he's pretty good at managing his own health and has a lot of heals.
Well, then I guess there's an extra card, huh? And we didn't level up. Okay. Oh, this is going to be awkward because I'm not going to be able to, uh, to add it on now. I just have to make a note or something. That's annoying. I can't manually adjust this right now. I can probably do it in scenario, I, I would bet. Just not outside of scenario. Term of Life 218. Of life. Okay, during your turn, remove all conditions from all figures. Then grant all figures a heal to self. Wow. But that's like to everything, right? It says all figures. So that includes enemies, right? It's a very interesting item. All conditions from all figures. Could be amazing in a big party, yeah. I mean, the thing is though, is that like, it's only doing the heal to you though. But in a scenario where there's like a bunch of like, like if your party gets immobilized, your party gets disarmed, your party gets poisoned, wounded. It's a very nice item to just chuck in, right? You can remove good conditions from enemies. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I probably want 25 gold more than I want the effect right now. <laughs> Considering it's a hand slot item as well. Interesting one though. Um, summer outpost then. Summer Outpost 60. I feel like the problem with a lot of the items in the... Uh, I mean, the Frosthaven has even more problems with item bloat, to be honest. So many items. And they're so, like... Interchangeable, you know? Like, oh, oh so, like, marginally different in terms of power level and... You know, that's a big problem with, and I said it, I said it, I feel like I say it every single stream, every single episode. I don't, I just don't think that items are in a great place in the game. I just think that items are just, yeah, they're just too interchangeable with each other. Too niche. Right, 60, right? Some our outpost event. It says SR, though. CSO, right? Means test now to put in a future product? Oh, maybe. Like I said before, though, I just feel like. Uh, Frosthaven and Gloomhaven is so much about the characters more than the items. Like, you know, in, in many other RPGs, you find a powerful item that might determine your build. You might go, oh, cool, this item is, gives me this kind of power up or this kind of thing, and you, and you would go into and explore that. Um, this game's never going to be that because it's about the character. It's about what that character can do with their cards and their abilities. So items have always got to just be complementary. And that's the problem. As the most characters like, okay, I want increased damage. I want advantage. I want increased move. 
jump. They want like, you know, I think the problem is that the, the items that do the basics well are always just going to be very, very desirable. Ever since the carpenter set up shop, Everyone's been happy to finally have someone who knows their way around a hammer to build up the town. But somehow, you're the ones out here in the cold, dark, dangerous woods with his shopping list. The carpenter wants to fashion a new set of fancy tools, but needs some very specific raw materials to do so. It's getting late, and you're stuck on the last two items on the list, elkwood and bluestone. You know he'll be upset if you don't find it, but you weren't expecting to be out this long, and you didn't bring the proper overnight equipment. Option A. Keep looking. The carpenter needs this material, and the town needs the carpenter. Option B. Go back to Frosthaven and ask around. Maybe someone has some in their personal stash. for the falcon all right what do you want to do option a or option b pull this up uh do you keep looking the carpenter needs his material and this town needs the carpenter or option b go back to frost haven and ask around maybe someone has some in their personal stash i can't say i've ever come across those two things before elkwood and bluestone plenty of wood plenty of lumber It needs to be more crack art. I mean, the pyro is kind of crack art 2.0. I still feel like I enjoy the crack art more, more for the story of the crack art than that. Everyone loves the crack art backstory. It's the best. Option A, for all of you guys, you all want to keep looking, all right? You're out here looking a long time. A, it takes you most of the night, but you finally find an elkwood tree and a small bluestone boulder. You harvest what you need, and fighting exhaustion, drag everything back to town. The sun is rising as you pound on the door to the carpenter's shop. A few minutes later, he opens the door, dreary and annoyed to be woken up this early. Wordlessly, you dump the materials on his doorstep and stomp off to get an hour of sleep. Oh. Okay, well, we gain 30 collective gold and one prosperity. All characters start the next scenario discarding two. Cards. Yeah, it's a pretty mean one, but we could probably get around that. I mean, we had that before and we got around it, but that was a scenario that specifically added as a condition, so. Um, you know, prosperity is nice. It's good to come by. And an extra 15 gold each is also not too bad. Okay, uh, do I want to buy stuff? I think I want to buy lumber for sure. With that gold we just got actually, may as well just buy some stuff, huh? I think that's probably a pretty good idea. Let me turn off that camera a second because it's no, no good in this phase. Okay. Um, I mean, we should probably buy everything. I mean, we're gonna have so much gold, right? We've got 25 gold from selling this because I'm not using this for sure. Um, 
So that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Do I like Arkham Horror? Um, I mean, yeah, I've never properly played Arkham Horror. I played Eldritch Horror one time, but we never completed it. Never actually played the uh, those games very much. Um, I've heard they're good, though. Like, they're just kind of uh, games that didn't really... I mean, I've never been much of a Cthulhu guy, really. I don't mind the theme, but I'm just not a huge Lovecraft enjoyer. Right, so who's getting him? I guess he's getting all of it, right? I may as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. Sounds like a good candidate. Um, we need to gain a herb. What herbs do we have? Rock fruit, flame fruit. Gosh, I should plant another one. Jesus. Get a rock root and then plant. Got so much of this stuff. So I think I should only have seven of that right now. Cool. Sounds good, Phantom. Sounds good to me. Um, we're going to get another rock root, and then I need to... What should we plant? Maybe we plant the corpse cap. Yeah, okay, let's plant a corpse cap. Where are my plants? Actually running out of stickers for the garden. Which I feel like should not be the case. Do I want to buy soldiers? Probably. Got to think about building that back up again now. Uh, click turn up to two soldiers for three gold and one material resource each. Um, eh, actually, do I care? I could do one. So we'll sell, we'll sell Tome of Life for 25 gold. As fun as it is, it's just not an item that, I mean, I'll take the 25 gold, please. Thank you very much. Um, do I need to do anything right now? I mean, in terms of crafting anything, I think, I don't think so. I think I'm pretty good. 
Feeling pretty good. I need to level up though, right? I need to do one level up. I feel like I haven't uh, earned... Because I didn't win the scenario. I feel like I haven't really earned uh, anything, you know? Right, level fives, huh? Ooh. Spicy. We have radiation and heat conduction. So radiation, attack five, poison. If we are in high, minus one attack and raise the temp. Attack four with... I mean, that's not bad. It's a way from getting from high to over for an attack four with poison. I mean, you, you, the chances are you're probably going to do like an over big attack or something. So the poison is going to pay off. It's a good way of kind of accelerating through the levels. Like I'd play an attack four poison for sure. And then if we're in green, if we're in kind of okay or whatever it is, they call it, just average or then it would drop down one. So it's a good way to get yourself either down to low or up to over. It's a little bit awkward if you are here though, because if you're here and you want to go up, you can't really play the card. So it's very much you need to play it on the way up. I guess you could play it on the way down if you were trying to do a big attack and then you wanted to come down to low. Eh, maybe. Um, 37 initiative is yeah, fine, probably not very usable. Move three on your next take damage effect while adjacent to at least one enemy, one adjacent enemy suffers that damage instead. Okay, so that relates to a couple of cards that we have. Um, you know, electrical discharge, for example, could work very well with that. BMAX, Ancient Drill. So most of the time it's one damage, but Electrical Discharge is two damage. But a lot of the time it is only one damage. I mean, that seems pretty versatile to me. It's interesting that it doesn't change your pressure. I would have liked to have seen a pressure up on this. Because then it really would have played into it. Because then it's putting you it's putting you into the right direction and it's giving you a great effect for doing so <clears throat> can't wait so you can actually play frost even in person <laughs> oh it's a beast it's a beast uh, heat conduction is if we were in over three retaliate one xp pressure down shield one if we are in low, we get three shield potentially, and one shield plus the other two. So an additional plus two shield, one XP, and we go up and create ice. Now that's quite a spicy, tasty card there. Creating ice is very good. And it's shield three, which is I mean that's gonna do a that's gonna do a hell of a lot of tanking. Eleven initiative two, that would be I think our lowest initiative. Whenever an ally ends their move ability adjacent to you, you may increase pressure to perform a heal to self. Discard this card when you have overpressure. But this brings you down with your 1 XP. Huh. Interesting. That's a tough choice at 5, huh? I think you've clearly got like the aggressive card. And one thing I will say is that I want to try and get to overpressure. I, I can quite often get myself to green. I can quite often get myself to orange or high pressure. Getting yourself to red to overpressure consistently when you need to is actually kind of difficult or it can be kind of difficult. And the other side of this card does not kind of help you really do that. It does give you a really impactful thing to do when you're low, but I already have a card that actually does that. Because I have two cards that I play very regularly that give me that benefit when I'm in low. And also bearing in mind that when the, you play this, you go up. So 
it doesn't work with other low effects, which is a bit weird. You think heat conduction is better at three or four players? Yeah, I mean, getting to, to maybe do multiple heals with the bottom could be very cool. Yeah. I think Radiation is probably the pick for me. It also works really, really nicely if I do want to go in for that um, stun with electrical uh, conductivity or whatever it's called. That take two damage stun. You do two damage to something and hit something for four and get the stun or whatever. I mean, that seems really good. And it just helps me move through the gears. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Radiation. I like the idea of this, but I think like I just have, it, it's competing too much. Like if I'm in over, I'm going to be playing something else. If I'm in low, I've got better cards for low, to be honest. So, and the bottom is not great for two player. So yeah, probably a pretty simple choice on that basis. You have a buddy across the country who has the game and I want to play with Phantom. Oh, interesting. How are you gonna, are you gonna play remote then, or are you like meeting up, or how how do you plan on doing that? So play over, uh, play over Teams, Skype, Discord, or whatever. MSN Messenger, that's what the kids use nowadays, right? You gonna move out there? Oh, nice. Even better. Those can go there. Those can go too. Okay. Got to think about what card to drop for that radiation, huh? To be honest, it's probably going to be the old uh, super heat transfer. Although it's a pretty good card. No, it could be Steam Armor. Don't really care for the payoff card there. Enjoy your dinner. Perk time. Replace one plus one card, one plus one target, and all enemies adjacent to suffer one damage. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Building things. Do you want a building? We just we just built uh, some wall last time, didn't we? Bit of a boring one, but I think I can build the last wall. I 
that's the very last wall, yeah. Yeah, it will be. Well, maybe I should just upgrade something. Walls are a bit boring, aren't they? They're a bit boring. Did we say upgrading the enhancer is a good idea? I think we did. How much does that cost, I wonder? Enhancer level two is pretty good. Yeah, enhancer's good, yeah. That's just what I was thinking, Banker. Here's what I was thinking. Oh, I don't even have the enhancer card out. <laughs> Whoops. Definitely built it. This is going to cost us four wood, five. Oh, I mean, yeah, we, we could do that, right? Yeah, easy. Forward. Five metal. No hide. Easy. Enhance, enhance level two, it is then. Reduce all enhancement costs by 10 gold. Hey, that is good. I have to wonder what the increased level ones are. They, they can't just give you 10 gold off every time. That's way too good. I ain't buying that. Oh no, how do I line this one up? Okay. One five seven point two we need to listen to. With the enhancer expanded. You visit Voice of Eight to see how they are liking the improved shop. Unsurprisingly, you find Nera embroiled in multiple tomes, the room aglow with spells, her hands weaving purple and black through the air. You wonder if you ought to leave her to it, but she signals you over, speaking excitedly. We have made contact with someone who may be trapped in the void. They must have endured cruelties from the corruption, but with that evil force gone, we should be able to pull them out to safety. Come, help me. This sounds dangerous at best, but that's a typical day in Frosthaven. Trusting Voice of Eight's judgment, 
You assist Nera in setting up the spell components as the rest of the Esther Collective materializes around you. They form a circle, chanting as a portal opens at the center. The procedure seems stable for a while as Nera scans for where the energy is strongest. She cries, and a surge of purple energy flares from the portal. A scarred hand emerges from the other side, but then the flat face of the rift cracks, and it appears the hand is stuck. Help! Nera pleads, and not knowing what else to do, you grab hold of the hand and pull. With great effort, an Esther tumbles forth right before the portal shatters in a shower of ethereal glass. The figure groans, shivering on the floor. Where is the pain? The hand shoots out, grabbing a shard of the portal. You jump back in alarm, but the Esther turns the sharp edge on themselves, carving strange symbols into the translucent flesh of their leg. You feel a strange tickling sensation on your own leg. Much better. They sigh. Thank you for releasing me from that prison. I'd been trapped there for so long. I don't think I can live without pain. But... The Esther suddenly stares at you with fierce intensity. I've also learned to redirect my pain. And I don't want any other innocents to experience anything like what I have. Point me toward evil. And I will destroy it. Oh boy, oh boy. Unlock Shackles class box. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, didn't see that one come in. I thought we were just getting a nice 10 gold discount. <laughs> Nothing more. Didn't really see that they were going to unlock a class there. Um, pretty cool. Um, I don't have time to review this class today, though. Uh, or look at it today, really. I really need to go to bed. Um, but that's very neat. So this is it. Maybe we'll take a look at it next time. But that means we got another character to add to the pool to maybe play when we uh, when we retire, which we're actually not that far from retiring. Um, at least not on the um, on the drill right now. Shortest uh, retirement quest potentially. So far, we have gone and had a character's name read, I believe, in every single outpost phase that we've done. So, it could be over very quick. Cool. That's cool, though. That's another one to add support. We can check that out next time. Love it. All right, then. Well, that will then be the end of today's episode. That was good. So the scenario was, uh, as I said, the scenario might be a bit polarizing, I think, for some. I generally liked it, though, I would say. But, uh... Not liked it well enough to want to replay it, even though I lost by, like, one turn. <laughs> one turn, one beat, one hex of movement. But, you know, it happens, it happens. This guy's very cool. Interested to check it out. I won't spoil it for myself. I'll check it out next time. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I'm interested. Oh, 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 scout oh, the That's the place <laughs> came from. <laughs> scout <laughs> That's the place so, came from. Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh -huh. for allies in the digital version? <laughs>